the moment of inertia of, say, a shaft, in some ways, uh, resembles the moment of inertia of a locomotive. All right? What makes the locomotive difficult to start or stop is its mass. Okay? For, say, a rotating shaft, what makes it difficult to start or stop rotating is its moment of inertia, the, the second moment, right? So we're going to um, look at this in an applied environment. We're going to have a look at some beams and, and the strength of those. Um, but that's a, good, uh, a very good comparison there, I find. Okay, so what are the uh, respective formulae for moments of inertia? Well, I've listed some of them there. You can see they're a bit like the first moments, but the integrand has squareds. So squareds of the distance times the density function. Okay? Um, there's also the so-called polar moment, or um, the second moment uh, about the origin, which is just the sum of the, the two integrals, I sub x and I sub y. All right, so let's look at an example. Consider a thin metal plate that covers the same triangular region as before. We're asked to calculate the second moments, including the polar moments. All right? Okay, so from the previous example, we calculated the mass, so we don't need to do that again. Okay, I'm just going to drop off the argument of the delta there just to save a bit of space. All right, for this example, our integrand is going to be, what's it going to be? It's going to be yx squared plus y cubed plus 2y squared dA. All right, we have the same description from before. So we can put in our limits of integration. So again, it's a nice, simple integral. And we can just go through, integrate the inside integral first, move on to the outside integral. So if you integrate the inside integral... You should get down to something like this. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you should fill in the details. And um, again, this is a very simple integral. Again, it'll break down to eight thirds. Right, so similarly, if I calculate I sub y, just again applying the formula, I get nine fifths. All right, so what does that mean? Well, the, the polar moment is the sum of these two things that we just calculated. Okay, oops. 